Yeah. That's the big question. How do you keep it from becoming a mind trap? And uh, I have talked with several of you about uh, this series, and I hope that it's been as impactful to you as it has been for me. And uh, it, it, it's interesting. The mind is, a, is an incredible thing, and it, it does incredible things. Uh, and it's interesting to me to see how different people's minds work and, uh, um, and how it sometimes works against us. And uh, so my wife, she's going through a master's program, and, uh, and she's a, a brilliant individual way smarter than me. Uh, any, any smarts that my children have gotten has come through her line for sure. Um, uh, and uh, because basically I've just got a couple of chipmunks playing racquetball. That's, that's, that's what, I, it's what it kind of feels like in my head. And, uh, and Jen would probably concur with that. Sometimes I act that way. But, uh, um, but she, she, she's brilliant. But she sometimes um, as she's going through this, uh, these courses, these master level courses, she's convinced, and she, she's, sometimes her, her, she'll overthink things, and, uh, and, and so in the middle of, of, of this course, you know, she'll be doing an assignment, and, uh, and then she convinces herself that she's done it completely wrong, and the professor's going to be mad at her, and, uh, and so then you know, she, she wrestles and, and has this unbelievable anxiety around, maybe I did it wrong. And, uh, and I think the worst grade she's gotten is like a 98. <laughs> and she, she has one class left, and she's pretty sure I'm, I'm probably going to fail this one. And I'm like, at this point, all of her children and myself look at her like, really? Yeah, I don't think so. So, um, you know, the mind is, is an amazing thing. Um, in week one, we talked about this trap of the victim trap, and it is a trap. And, and right up front, I would say, you know, um, you know, there, many of us, in fact, I would say all of us, could claim victimhood, and, uh, and some of you f- for sure have been victims, and I don't want to take that away um, for sure, and I don't want to take the pain of that, uh, whatever happened to you, away either. That's real pain, and there should be, you know, compassion around that. But I don't want you to stay there. See, and, and sometimes the, the trap is, I'm going to stay here because I deserve to be here, and I'm going to leverage it. And, 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 and if you do that, you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck. You'll never move forward or heal or be able to do everything that God has called you to do if you stay in the victim mindset where everyone else owes me, or you think this puts me in a special category that no one else is in. And the fact is, every single one of us have been victims. Every one of us have been victims. Every one of us could, could claim victimhood. But if you stay there, then, then you'll, get, you're, you'll be stuck, and you'll never be able to move forward in the goals that you maybe have for your life and certainly the things that God wants you to do. And we talked about Joseph. And I tell you what, if there was a guy that could have leveraged victimhood, it was Joseph. And if he had, there's no way in the world he would have accomplished everything that God had for him to accomplish. So victimhood, it's a a mind trap that that, uh, that we easily fall into. And we last week we talked about its first cousin, negativity. The, the mind trap of negativity and where I, you know, I stay in this, in this trap of, of being negative and being negative and being negative. How do I get out of it? And, and, and it's the first cousin to the victim trap because if I'm a victim, then I kind of deserve to be negative. And, uh, and so we talked about negativity as actually rooted in self. It has its roots in self and uh and 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 it manifests itself in an ungrateful spirit if you want to break the the trap of negativity you become a grateful person grateful for your family grateful for your job grateful for your country grateful for your church grateful for everything around you if you become a grateful person it is very difficult to be a negative person but see if you're negative and you get into that trap of being uh, in, in the negative uh, mindset, it will manifest itself in an ungrateful spirit, and that ungrateful spirit comes from a root of self. 
And we talked about that last week. If you missed the last two weeks, I would encourage you to get on our YouTube channel and you can catch up there. Well, today I want to talk about the all or nothing mind trap. The all or nothing mind trap. And we're going to wrap up this series today. The all or nothing mind trap. This is maybe one that, that I struggle with more than any of the others, although for sure I think we all struggle with all of these mind traps. But uh, the all or nothing mind trap is, is you know, it, you, you think in, in extreme terms. It's, it's all or nothing. And, uh, and, and for me, I've thought about, you know, over, over the years, um, having a successful business and then having a business that I was on the wrong side of compounding interest. That's, that's a terrible place to be. And thinking, okay, I'm a good businessman, I'm a horrible businessman. And thinking in terms, I'm, I'm one or the other, I, I'm, I'm nowhere in between, but I'm either a really successful one or I'm just, uh, I'm a failure. In terms of leadership, I've, I've struggled with this where, you know, you, you think, man, I was thinking about the, the original Life Center plan and the leadership and all of the stuff, and some of you have no idea um, what all went, went down with that, and that, that's good. You probably don't need to know. But, it, it, you know, it's just there was, there was thinking that, man, well, I, we could accomplish this. We could do something so, so significant and so unbelievable and be able to serve our communities in an unbelievable way. And we had leadership around it, and we had traction around it, and we had vision around it, and we had sacrifice around it, and then it didn't happen. You are a horrible leader. You're a great leader. You're a horrible leader. I think about it in terms of, of a pastor, and I was thinking, you know, in the, uh, um, in the, in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks, I've been writing down all of the names of guys that I would like to have lunch with. I stopped at 84. And I'm like, you know, you, you, I'm thinking, okay, <clears throat> I get a little bit, you know, you, you get some feedback, and it's positive feedback, and you're like, okay, I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. And then, you, and then you, you're like, well, you ain't doing this, you ain't doing this, and na 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 You're horrible. You're horrible. And, and you have these two extremes. Okay, you're, you're doing good. You're horrible. You're doing good. You're horrible. Which one is it? I don't know. And, and, and it's this trap of, I'm one or the other, but I can't seem to find out that you know, there might be some possibilities. See, it's the tendency to think in terms of polar opposites without accepting the possibilities that lie between these two extremes. The fact that, that there's some middle ground where growth happens. Or it's like, you're either just one or the other. You ever thought in these terms, oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm really good at this. I'm awesome at this. And then something happens, you're like, I'm worthless. I'm terrible. I'm smart. I'm smart. I, 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 you know what? I get good grades. And, 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 then, you, and then you take the, uh, the driver's test and you fail it. I'm stupid. Right? And, and there's no middle ground. It's not like I can be smart in one thing, but I struggle in this one area. I actually have a good mind and, and, and I can do these other areas, but but this one area I struggle in, I can't struggle in that area. It's all or none. It's either I'm smart at everything, I'm good at everything, or I'm no good. And, and we tend to go into these two extremes. I'm successful. I'm a failure. This, was, this might, might be my favorite. I'm Cindy Crawford. I'm ugly. All you young people are like, I have no idea who Cindy Crawford is. I don't care. All the old people do. I'm Cindy Crawford. I'm, now they're Googling it. Like, come back. Come on. Come back. You know, you keep going. I'm a good Christian. You, you start going into the, 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 the realm of religion. I'm a good Christian. I'm a horrible Christian. God loves me. God hates me. God's happy with me. Right now, I'm doing this and this and this, you know, and God's happy with me. Or, you know what? I got up in the middle of the day, oh, I've been working on this area, and I, and I, you know, I messed up. God's disappointed. God hates me. God doesn't like me right now. In fact, I would, I would imagine that, 
those of you that struggle with this trap, for the most part, you think either God is disappointed with you or he just puts up with you, but he's basically always negative when he thinks about you. See, it, it's this trap of, of one extreme or the other, but we don't leave ourselves any room for growth in the middle. And see, when it comes to God, we all tend to think in terms of pass-fail, right? It's, it, we, we think in terms of, of pass-fail, and, and, uh, and, and, and yet if we do this, limiting yourself to a pass-fail perspective will limit how much God grows you. It will limit how much God grows you in the middle because you're, you're thinking, I'm failing at, 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 at this whole Christian life and I'm failing at following Jesus, so I'm just going to sit on the sideline. And, and as a result, I'm not going to allow God to grow me in the areas. And I think one of the things that we think is, is we confuse salvation with sanctification, okay? Those are two big religious words. Salvation... Am I, do I have eternal life? Am I going to heaven? And sanctification, the process of becoming more like Jesus. And, and we confuse those two things. We, we think, I mess up, I'm no longer going to heaven. It, we think it's pass-fail in, in that regard. And yet, when we place our faith in Jesus, the eternity part is taken care of. I, I, I have placed my faith in Jesus. He died on the cross for my sin. And the gap, the gap between God's holiness and my imperfections and my sin, God filled that gap with his grace and I accept it. I receive it. And so my, my salvation is, is taken care of. I am in Christ. Now, I don't have to worry about the salvation part of it. I am in the process of growing and learning what it means to live for Jesus every day of my life. And I, and, and I don't get it right all the time. And there's areas where God's working on me in and trying to get me better at. But see, if I think it's just this pass-fail deal, it's going gonna, it's gonna to trap you. It's going to paralyze you. I was thinking about and, 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 and sometimes, you know, the end goal gets us kind of messed up. I was thinking about this with Tom Osborne. One of the reasons Tom was such an incredible coach, if you would ask him whether the process of growing players um, was better or the national championship, the goal was better, I guarantee you he would say it was the process of growing players. The championships, sure, fine. But I guarantee you, that's not what he was about. He was about growing players and growing men. So growing them as players and growing them as men in their character. That gave him way more pleasure than just the national championship. That's just icing on the cake. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, you know what? I love the process. That's why he was a great coach of, of getting players to get to their fullest potential. And you know what? If there's icing on the cake at the end, fine. And, and in the same way, our salvation is secure in Jesus. That's the end, okay? That's, that's something we, we're hoping for, we're looking forward to. It, it is coming and it has unbelievable great joy. But in the meantime, there's a process that God wants to take us on. And one of the guys that, that uh, we see in the Scripture that's, you know, there was a lot of process. It's like, well, maybe I have more process than some people. Um, the, the Apostle Peter was probably one of those guys. He had a lot of process. Peter was, was a guy of extremes. You know, he, he, he was an audacious guy. He was bold. He was, he was either all in or all out, but he, he rarely had any of this middle ground and, and struggled with that. And, uh, and seeing Jesus introduce this, this rough, 
um, rough on the edges fisherman and asking him to follow him and, uh, and, and asking him to lower his nets, <coughs> excuse me, asking him to lower his nets into the water after he had been fishing all night, didn't catch anything. I'm sure Peter had some choice words for him. And maybe he didn't say them out loud, but I guarantee you he was thinking them. And, uh, and so he, he lowers his net in and ends up catching all of these fish. In fact, it was breaking the net. And so Jesus is like, hey, you want to follow me? He's like, oh, I will follow you anywhere. And so he, he starts following him. And I have got a tickle <coughs> in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. So he starts following him. And, uh, and then he, you know, he, 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 Jesus takes him on some field trips. And, uh, and he's teaching, trying to teach the guys about fear. Like, hey, it, when, you, when you have me in, in the boat with you, when you have your future secure, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. And then he, he would teach them about fear, and then he would take them on, on a field trip. And one of the field trips was out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, and, uh, and Jesus meets them, and Jesus is standing on the water. You remember this? And he invites Peter out onto the water, and Peter's, you know, Peter being Peter, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm coming out. And so he comes out onto the water, and he's focused on Jesus, right? He's like, the only way I'm staying up, I'm focused on Jesus. And all of a sudden, he sees this great big wave, and his focus comes off of Jesus to the wave, and, oh, thanks, sure. His focus comes off of Jesus to the wave and goes from trust to fear. And he starts sinking. And so he's learning. He's growing. Jesus is intentionally growing. Now, do you think Jesus was just like unbelievably disappointed and unbelievably mad at Peter? How could you? How, how, how could you do that? I'm so mad at you. No. He's like, I knew you were going to do that. And there's going to be some huge waves, Peter, that come into your life. And you need to figure out that you can trust me in the middle of those great big waves. And, uh, and so he's learning and he's growing. And, uh, and then, you know, Jesus is talking to his guys and he's like, hey, what's the word on the street about me? And, G and, and, and they're telling him, you know, kind of what the word is. And then Peter comes along and Jesus is like, hey, who do you say I am? And Peter's like, I know who you are. You're the Christ. You're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And, uh, and, then, and then Jesus is like, bingo. And he's like, hey, I'm going to have to leave for a while. And where I'm going, you can't come. And Peter's like, no, 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 wait a second. Wherever you go, I go. And you know what? Whatever you get into, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right there. Right? I'm all in. In fact... You know what? <clears throat> I would die for you, Jesus. I am so in. I'm so in. I would die for you. There's no way. And Jesus looks at Peter. He's like, really? In just a few hours, you are going to deny that you even know who I am. Three times. Peter's like, oh, no, 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 no. And then Jesus is arrested. And, and, and Peter slices off the guy's ear. You remember that? Slices off the guy's ear. He's so in. And Jesus is like, no, this isn't the way it's going to go. And he ends up healing the guy. And then, and then Peter's like disillusioned. And all of a sudden, it's not looking good for Jesus. And, and Peter's kind of in the periphery. And some people are recognizing that he was with Jesus. And pretty soon, Peter's like, I don't even know who he is. No, I don't know him. I wasn't with him. And this middle school girl comes along and is like, I recognize you. In fact, I recognize your accent. And Peter, being the fisherman and uh, using some select sailor language, is, uh, is trying to convince this middle school girl he doesn't even know who Jesus is, has never been a part of him. And if you're going to look at pass fail, I would be like, fail. And what does Jesus do? <laughs> Peter's the, one of the first guys he goes after after the resurrection to restore him. To be able to communicate to him, Peter. And he asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter's like, yes, Jesus, I love you. Peter, 
do you love me? Yes, I love you. Then, then feed my sheep. Then, then shepherd my flock. Do you love me? And the third time, it hurt Peter. He's like, Jesus, you know everything. You, you already know the answer before I would ever give it. You know everything. And Jesus is telling Peter, hey, I know you love me. And you know what? I'm going to put you in charge of the whole thing. And Peter ends up becoming a huge leader in the early church. And yet you're thinking, how in the world would Jesus put Peter in charge? I mean, didn't he just deny knowing him at all? And now he's in charge. (laughs) See, we tend to think more in in terms of pass-fail, and we tend to think that that if we mess up, then God doesn't want to use us anymore. That, that we're invaluable, that, that we're sidelined, that, that our time is, that, that God couldn't ever do anything with us, and so we just quit. We, we, we stand content to be on the sideline. See, Peter, he talks about this whole relationship of, of the salvation that we have secured and looking forward to, and he talks about it in the letter that he wrote in 1 Peter 1, verse 3. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation Because of what Jesus did, now we're living in this time with great expectation. What is that expectation? Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you. It is coming. It's pure and undefiled. Beyond the reach of change and decay. In other words, it's secure. It's there. And when you have placed your faith in Jesus, that part is taken care of. Now God wants to grow you. There's some things in you that need to change. There's some things in you that are rough. There's some things in you that don't reflect his character. And he's going to work on you with those things. And he wants to grow you in those things. So he says, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. He goes on in his second letter, verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 2. In his second letter, he says, Peter says, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, as you learn how God has made the world to work and you submit to it. When you, when you learn how God wants you to, to, to live your life, how He wants you to speak the words that come out of your mouth and control your tongue as, in, in the way that He wants you to, to not just be rooted in self, but to have an attitude of gratitude, to, to be able to look outside of yourself and say, Man, they look discouraged. I'm going to send them a note. They look like they need a meal. I'm going to send them a meal. I'm, they, they look, I'm going to send them a text and encourage them. I'm going to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And he wants to grow you in that. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We, we have everything that we need. And in that, he wants to grow us. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the One who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. He's he's talking about this stuff that's coming down the road. And because of His glory and excellence, He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. This, these human desires that are rooted in self. And then he says, okay, now that you have this, this salvation, now that you have eternal life, and you have this perspective in view of all this, what is all of this? Well, all of this is everything that he has made possible, the inheritance, 
that you are going to receive because you have placed your faith in Jesus. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises with what? Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. I'm going to start working. There's some areas in my life where morally, you know what, it's just a little, it's a little sketchy. God wants to, to, you to, to, to take a big old helping of moral excellence and put it on your plate. And, and He's going to work on you in that area. Supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. Of, I'm going to read His Word because I want to know what God's ways are. I want to know the way He's made this world to work. I want to know what's right and what's wrong. And knowledge with self-control. I'm going to put some guardrails on both sides of me. I'm going to begin to work on self-control. That's one area in my life is like, woo, you don't have a whole lot of self-control. And, and, and you're looking, you're like, oh, I need one of those. And, and, and the Spirit of God's like, mm, maybe you don't need one of those. And you, and you know what? And you go and you buy one of those, and then you find out you didn't need one of those, and then there's a little bit of pain involved because you've maybe financed it and and, and now there's like, ooh, you know, and, and, and instead of, well, I failed. God, I'm, I'm no good. God's like, no. No. You know what? I want you to get back up. You learned some things, and now I want you to go again. Self-control with patient endurance. So I'm, I'm putting these things on my plate. It's not pass or fail. It's learning as I go. And patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be. If you think it's past fail, and I just failed so God doesn't want to use me anymore, and so, yeah, I may or may not have messed up my eternity, but... At this point, I'm like, I'm just out. It is a trap. It is a lie from Satan himself to keep you from being productive in what God wants to do through you. So the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to, what? Develop. It is. It's a process of developing, of growing in this way, are short-sighted or blind, forgetting, what are they forgetting? They're forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. They're forgetting what lies ahead. They're forgetting that, that they have forgiveness of sin, that eternity is taken care of. And they're mixing it up, and they're thinking, I'm, I'm either in or I'm out, or I'm in or I'm out, or I'm in, I'm out. And not realizing God wants to grow you every single day of your life. What are some takeaways? Embrace the position you have in Christ. (laughs) I am in Christ. Eternity is mine. Wherever I am going to be with Jesus, when my time on this earth is done, my eternity is secure in Jesus. Remind yourself often of that because when you lose sight of that, You start mixing it up with the failures of today. Get up every day and go to practice. Stop viewing it as pass-fail and start viewing it as every single day is a new day for you to get up and for me to get up and go to practice. We get to go practice. And you get to practice self-control. You get to practice having control of your tongue. You get to have practice of, your, of, of controlling your attitude. You get to have practice of, of the level of gratitude that you're going to live with. You're going to go to practice every single day. And, and the practice is to make you better and better because God wants to grow you to become more like Him. So get, every day, get up every day, go to practice. Embrace the fact that you are in process. And, and don't look at, at, at them because looking at them, you know what? 
they may have been in process way longer than you. And some of you that have been in process for a long time, don't you dare look back at them and say, what is wrong with them? You've been in, God's been shaving stuff off of you for a lot of years. And instead of viewing them as, you know, good grief, maybe you should have compassion and say, hey, is there a way that I could mentor them? Is there a way that I could pour into them? Is there a way that I could help them along in some of the things and some of the process that God needs to take them on? And finally, keep going and keep growing. Keep going and keep growing. God wants to do incredible things through your life. He has uniquely wired every single one of you in incredible ways. And wherever you have started in your knowledge of Him and in in what you know of Him and the default setting that you have when you came to know Him, and, and, and you want to get better and better and better, and, and you're growing and you're making some progress, and then a, a negative circumstance comes into your life and it kind of slaps you upside the head, and guess what you do? You whoop, right back to your default setting, don't you? And you're like, doggone it. See, it's a process of God wants to make that default setting. So when something happens to you and you used to respond to it with cursing and drinking and, and, and anger and all of this stuff, all of a sudden the default setting comes maybe back to here, but not all the way back to here. Why? Because you're growing. You're in process. So this mind trap, It is a trap. This all or nothing. May we have grace as a church to realize people are in process and and we want to do the best that we can do in pouring in and mentoring and helping and giving grace in the gaps. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know that this is a, an area for me, for sure, that uh, I struggle in. That it's, it's all or nothing. And uh, God, you have reminded me and reminded me and reminded me. and You've been gracious to me. And you're continuing to grow me. But God, I pray for everyone here today who... This, this is something they, they relate to. That they feel like it's, it's pass or fail. And inevitably, they just end up feeling like they fail. And they feel like you're continuously disappointed in them. and You're, you're upset with them. And, but God, I just I pray that you would help us to see things the way you see them. God, I'm, I'm reminded of, of a, a great father who's teaching their child to ride a bike. Father, the, the view of the father is, I know you're going to fail. I, I know you're going you're gonna to crash. And, and I'm going to get you back up, and I'm going to get you back up, and I'm going to get you back up. And, and father, and then all of a sudden, it clicks. And, and once you've kind of learned how to ride, you, you can't un- forget. You, you, you got that part. And every single area of our life, God, you, it's like you're teaching us to ride a bike in that area. You know we're going to crash. And yet you keep getting us up, dusting us off, and saying, all right, let's try it again. But God, I pray that we would view it that way. And remind us when we want to go back, pass, fail. Pray in Jesus' name. Well, hello there, Crossing. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to about this mind trap of all or nothing. Um, one of the things that when you were talking about and you have um, the gap 
between all or nothing. There's yeah. this gap. Um, that's one of the things last yesterday at that Warriors of the Light conference, they talked about standing in the gap or who's going to fill that gap. Um, now, they were talking in the aspect of discipleship, of the, the older generation discipling the younger generation and coming in and doing that. But I think it has some of that same concept of not, not just us with our, our personal walks with the Lord, and yes, He comes and fills in that gap for sure and brings us along, but for us to walk alongside others and to help them along and, realize, and, and, and not to think of it in that way with them as well. It's not an all or nothing with all of those that we're discipling. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's a great picture of people that Jesus is, people who may have thought at one time in their life, you know, that I've messed up too much. God can't use me. And, and God's patient with them. And, and, and He grows them. And He grows them. And pretty soon, some years pass. And, and they find themselves in a different place. And, uh, and then they look back. And there's some people exactly where they were. And they are able then to, to turn around and pour in and pour in and pour in. That's, in my mind, a perfect picture of of discipleship and a, and a perfect picture of how God wants the body of Christ to work and a picture of His heart for us is, is you know, that we learn and, and, we, and we grow and He wants us to grow and He understands. He knew Peter was going to see the big wave. In fact, that's why Jesus let the big wave come because He wanted to grow him in that area. And so, um, I just when we understand that God's love for us uh, is that it's so great that He wants to pick us up, dust us off, and say, okay, here, let's, let's try it again. That's yeah. a great picture. I think of David, and even in the Psalms when he writes, you know, Lord, who am I that we have come this far? Like, and even David can recognize, and yeah. he's another one that had, you know, great here, and then we fail. But but he, that is probably one reason why he's called a man after God's own heart is that David didn't wallow in that. He's a good example yeah. of, of p- gain, being able to pick up himself and, and go forward. Yeah, so. of asking forgiveness and then getting up and, mm-hmm. and trying again. Yep. Yeah. Um, I... I <laughs> The, you, we talked last time about the, um, the bike analogy, yeah. and I think that is a, a wonderful picture of um, how God just comes alongside us. He, we do, you know, we may crash, we fail, we're going to get skinned knees along the way, but our Father is going to just come in and, and love us and uh, pick us back up, dust us off, and put us right back on that bike and say, no, it's not time for you to be done. You're going to keep... Yeah. You're going to keep going. Yeah. So I, I really like that. Um, as we go now into this next week, what are some thoughts for you? What are yeah. some, uh, what's a charge you can give us as we can go forward and say, okay, I've got that? Well, I think just that. If, I think uh, one is, are you securing your salvation? And have you taken care of that? If you haven't taken care of that, let's start there. Um, and reach out to one of our pastors or a friend that you know that, um, and, and let's start with that. But um, every single day, I want you to go to practice. And I want you to have the mindset that, I'm okay, I'm going to get up. And, and God designed it to where we get to have a brand new day every single day. So we get to start over. And, it, and, and today, I'm going to get up. And I may have crashed the bike yesterday. But I'm going to get up. I'm going to ask God for forgiveness and make sure that relationship is right. I'm going to continue to work on the root and concentrate and keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. And then say, okay, um, here's an area in my life I, wanna, I think Jesus wants me to get better in. And, uh, and I'm going to work in that area. And, uh, and then if you crash and fall, just every day, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to go to practice and um, kind of have that mindset. All right. So. Well, thank you. Yeah. And... Um, Thank you for joining us, and we wish you well this week. Go stand in the gap.